Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. Today, we'll be going over the iCare flight plan. Before we get started though, kindly consider helping the channel grow by subscribing and liking the video, if you find it helpful. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. First things first, items preceding item 7, which is the section highlighted in front of you right now, are to be completed by ATC and Com Services. So we always leave it blank, all right? In item 7, we insert either our call sign, flight number, or in case of a general aviation, we put in our aircraft registration. So just make sure the letters are all in capital, all right? Next, in item 8, flight rules. This means whether the flight will be under VFR or IFR, or initially VFR, then switch to IFR, or vice versa. So if the flight will be a simple VFR cross country, you insert the letter V. If the flight is an IFR flight, you insert the letter I. Now, sometimes we get to depart from uncontrolled airports where no radar service is provided. So we depart under VFR, then at some point along the way, we join the controlled airspace and we carry on the flight under IFR. In this case, we put in the letter Z. Z signifies that flight rules will change from VFR to IFR, okay? And in case we are flying in an uncontrolled airspace, we put in Y, which signifies that we're going to start the flight under IFR, and once we are out of controlled airspace, or where radar service is unavailable, we will continue our flight under VFR. Okay? Next is type of flight. This basically means whether the flight is a scheduled flight, such as airline, um, in this case, we put in S as a scheduled flight. N for non-scheduled or charter flights. M for military. And for general aviation, we normally put G. And for any other category, we put X. Any other flight um, type that does not fall in any of the uh, uh, previously mentioned categories. Okay? So let's move on to item 9. This item is related to formation flying. Usually we do not fly in formation, so we leave it blank. If we were to fly in formation, however, say three aircraft, we put in 0 2, meaning the primary airplane plus two accompanying aircraft. All right? Next is the type of aircraft. Make sure when inserting the type of the aircraft you are flying that you are complying with the ICAO aircraft type codes or designators. For example, the Airbus 300, uh, the Airbus A350-900 goes in like A359. Diamond DA42 goes in like DA42, and so on. Okay? If you are unsure of your aircraft code, I recommend you go on the ICAO official website for aircraft type designators, as shown in front of you right now, and you simply put in the aircraft type and you voila. Here is your uh, ICAO aircraft designator. Okay, it's uh, pretty much uh, straightforward. Next, the wake turbulence category. There are four designators and they are as follows. First, we have the L or the light category allocated for aircraft with a maximum takeoff mass of 7,000 kilogram or less or 15,500 pounds or less. Then we have M or medium category allocated for aircraft with a maximum takeoff mass of more than 7,000 kg but less than 136,000 kg or like 300,000 pounds. And then we have the H or the heavy which is allocated for aircraft with a maximum takeoff mass of more than 136,000 kg except for the uh, A380 Super Jumbo. The A380 is allocated the designator um, J or Juliet. J stands for super, and currently it is the only aircraft that falls into this category. Okay, let's move on to item 10 equipment. In this box, we insert our onboard equipment such as VOR, GNSS, DME. Um, SBAS, EDF, and so on, followed by the type of the SSR transponder capability uh, that we have, mode A, mode C, mode S, etc. 
So I will leave a link in the description box below where you guys could find all the appropriate letters and their associated equipment. And for your information, if you go to iCode document uh, 4444, you will find pretty much everything you need to know regarding how to file or how to fill a flight plan and all the associated codes and uh, samples. So for the sake of this video, say our aircraft today has the following equipment. We have a GNSS, we have a VOR, a VHF uh, RTF, radio telephony, uh, DME, an ILS receiver, plus an SPAS, and a mode S transponder. Okay, so how we will go up about this one. First, the S, which stands for standard equipments. The following three equipments are considered standard and fall under the letter S, which are a VHF RTF, so we have to have a VHF radio, a VOR receiver, and an ILS receiver. If we have these three letters, all, uh, sorry, if we have these three uh, equipments all together, we put the letter S. Then the ne next, we have GNSS. So if we are equipped, we put G. Next, DME, we put D. And then SPAS. SPAS allows us to fly LPV approaches. So it's, it has been located the letter B, Bravo. That's it. That's all we have in this example. So after the slash comes the uh, transponder type. And we said we have transponder mode S, so we just put in the letter S. And just a quick overview, the mode S transponder, in addition to position and air pressure altitude reporting capability and call sign, uh, it also allows for data link messages like traffic in the vicinity and even weather information should the aircraft be equipped with ADSB. Okay. So we have mode A, it, also, it only gives us the, uh, or gives the uh, controller our position report, where we are. Mode C, it gives uh, the position ahead in all plus the, um, uh, the altitude. And mode S, it gives all these three plus pressure altitude, reporting capability of 25 feet, and data link messages, like we said, plus call sign, um, weather information and so on. I will make another video about the transponder modes and, uh, and SSR and all that in the upcoming uh, video. Okay, next we have item 13. This is pretty much straightforward. The four letter code of your departure airdrome. Sometimes you may be departing after an airdrome to which there's no IK code. In such case, you insert ZZ. Z, Z, so four times uh, the letter Z. Then you go down to item 18 and you specify the airdrome location either by latitude and longitude coordinates or by a radial distance from a nearby nav aid. Next, off block time. Again, this is the time you are expected to start taxiing or uh, to push back. All right, this is the time you leave your gate or stand. Basically, the time you start taxiing moving okay next we have uh, item 15 there goes in your cruising speed in knots okay so please keep in mind this is TAS true airspeed not indicated airspeed not ground speed all right this is true airspeed the way you insert you put n followed by zero followed by the three digit uh, true airspeed most of the time it's in knots, but if it's in kilometer, I don't think there are aircrafts now flying kilometers. So if your aircraft happens to fly um, in kilometers, then you put letter K. But for 99% of the time we fly in knots, so we put the letter N. Next, your cruising altitude or flight level. Say cruising at flight level 150, you insert F150. Okay, if you will be flying uh, on an altitude, say for example 7,000 feet, then you are you use the letter A070. 11,000 feet is written like A110 and so forth. All right, next your route here we include your SID standard instrument departure 
Airways and Waypoints, and finally a SAR, Standard Terminal Arrival. Just do one quick example for the sake of this video for better understanding. We are flying a flight plan from Doha International, OTBD, to Abu Dhabi, Albertine Executive, OMAD. Let's go to skyvector.com. This is an excellent website for flight planning for both real life as well as um, for simulators. So first, we put in the departure aerodrome here, OTBD, the destination aerodrome, OMAD. We come down here and insert our SID or SID. In this example, our SID is Ubuntu 1 Sierra. So we, runway 15 is in use for the sake of this example. So we'll be departing um, southward and then towards the uh, west. Followed by the airways, you'll be joining upon reaching the waypoint Bundu. In our case, we'll be joining this airway right here, a Bravo 415. Then we will fly on the airway Bravo 415 all the way until um, the waypoint uh, Yuliki or Uliki, however uh, you, would you like to um, pronounce it. From Yuliki, we'll join the star, and it's, in this example, it's Yuliki 1 Sierra, as shown in front of you. All right. So let's go back to our IKEA flight plan and see how we put in our today's route again. So the same order, we go first the SID, Bundu 1 Sierra, followed by the airway, we'll be joining, Bravo 415, and then Yuliki, we will exit uh, the exit point from the airway Bravo 415 is Yuliki. And from Yuliki, we will join the star, which happens to be Yuliki 1 Sierra. All right. Again, this is one basic example. Sometimes you are departing uh, airdromes without SIDs or perhaps arriving at airdromes without stars. Uh, don't panic. In most cases, in today's world, ATC will be radar vectoring you anyway. All right, item 16 now. Again, pretty straightforward. Destination airdrome for letter code. Next, the EET. Estimated elapsed time. This is, guys, um, this is the total time from departure or takeoff until you arrive overhead the airport when very far or when you overhead the initial approach fix when IFR. If there is no initial approach fix, then the time you reach the point or navigate from which you should start the approach. Okay? So this is the total time. This is not an ATA. Uh, this is not an ETA. So this is the total duration. Okay? So next, you mention your destination alternate. All right? Next, item 18. This box is left for other information. Anything that is useful to ETS, uh, example include but not limited to um, aircraft registration for example estimated time to um, crossing FIRs departure and destination airdromes such as lat longs in case there was no designator given etc all right guys so for the sake of not making this video too long for you I will leave it here for this one and for the item 19 uh, which which is all about search and rescue we'll cover it in the next video so like always thanks for thanks again for watching um if you have any questions can you feel free to leave them in the comment section below and i'll be more than happy to assist you guys so until the next video see ya